Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we will upgrade my DIY one wheel with a higher voltage battery. My 12S1P pack uses the supposedly best cells on the market, but still suffers from massive voltage sag, which causes my fun wheel to be only fun to ride when the battery is well above a 50% charge. So let's see how adding just four additional cells will change the overall performance. I've been riding this fun wheel now with the little Fokker inside for um, two to three weeks. Ironed out all the configuration issues with balancing and motor configuration. And uh, I've so far only been using the same battery I had in the cheap Fokker, which is a 12S battery, which gets you up to 50 volts basically. And now we will upgrade the battery to 16S, which will give us up to 67 volts. So that should improve both the uh, battery capacity as well as the uh, maximum sustained currents that we can deliver with the additional cells. So let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. All right, so here is my 12S1P battery. And uh, there is some extra space in here, as you can see. This is one of the 21700 cells. Two of them, well, they fit in easily, but the other two, I think, will have to uh, make some more room. Because I had so much extra space in here, I was being generous with the build of the 12S battery. I uh, printed a 3D printed case and uh, I think I'm just gonna have to take that off and see what that looks like underneath. All right, here we can see my BMS, which of course is only 12S, so that's gonna be another story. I'm initially gonna do it without a 16S BMS. Don't do this at home, kids. So even with the plastic taken off on that one side, we still need some extra space because it's sticking out like crazy. So uh, gotta do a little bit more. Okay, now let's do it. We've got our spot welder set to 40 milliseconds pre-weld and 90 milliseconds for the main weld. Here's our nickel strip, nice and rounded off. We've got fish paper rings on the positive side. Time to push the button. Beautiful. Twice. And a third one. All right. There is our weld, nice and solid. And now we should be able to bend it. If we did a good job, this should be no problem. Yep, seems to work. Now that the spot welding is done, this is what it looks like. Here we've got some nice welds, not super consistent, but good enough. And uh, yeah, just a little bit more JST crimping to get that connector, the balance connector, and we'll be good. I used too short of a piece of shrink wrap. I didn't realize it would also shrink in the horizontal direction, duh, but um, okay. It'll do. I'll add a little bit more captain tape and uh, I'll be fine. I don't want to make it too thick because it needs to fit into that tiny spot. So I finally got my 16S battery put together. It's kind of a shit show, but uh, I think everything should be fairly solid. But uh, yeah, I had to carve out something here in the enclosure and then my wiring it's just a nightmare. I only have a 12S BMS, so the other 4S I will have to uh, balance charge manually. And uh, yeah, so for the time being, until I get my 16S BMS, I will 
leave it like this. Now I still need to print a, a 10 millimeter spacer for the foot pad so that we give this guy some space. And then we can finally try this thing out. Here's another five hours of printing and 120 grams of PLA. But we need the spacer for the thick batteries. And it is done. All right, let's give this a try. All right. Looks good. Here it is. It's not pretty, but it should work. And uh, it'll be good enough for testing for sure. So let's configure the firmware. The only thing we need to change at first is in motor settings, general voltage. Let's multiply this basically proportionally from 16 to, uh, from 12 to 16. So we've got something like 49 here and 47 there. So that's the voltage cutoff start and end, which we never really want to hit anyway. And the most important setting is in balance, tilt back. We want that to happen. Um, high voltage tilt back. The battery is 67.2 full, so 68.5 should be good. And low voltage tilt back, we want to be two volts or so above the um, cutoff start. So 51.5. 51 and that is it. So we write the motor and the app configuration. And now we're good. One thing I forgot, it's not very important, but just for completeness sake, if you go to motor settings, additional info in the setup tab, there is the battery cells in series. Here you go from 12 to 16. This is only for efficiency or range reporting. Um, so it doesn't affect your writing at all, but it uh, is a good idea to update that to reflect your battery. All right, I'll start with a quick garage test. We got one full kilometer of uphill, 10% average grade. Let's go. Handing it to the cameraman. I have run up the same one kilometer road with my one wheel before and after the battery upgrade. The road is almost a constant 10% incline and I try to keep the speed the same during all the runs, but somehow I ended up a little faster towards the end, but probably mostly because I got a little braver. So here is a summary of my findings. The higher voltage of my new battery helped keep the battery currents lower despite the slightly higher speed. The best part, of course, is that duty cycle was much lower, which means I have way more headroom. I could probably fly up this hill at 15 miles an hour and still not hit max duty cycle. And as an added bonus, I used less energy than with the 12S battery, despite the higher speed, which seems to indicate that the little Fokker operates more efficiently at the higher battery voltage. Now what about voltage sag? The simple answer is that due to the lower battery currents, there's also less voltage sag. At 12S, my 1P battery was very disappointing and felt vastly inferior to my 12S 2P battery on my first fun wheel, even though on paper the current ratings were the same. But now, at 16S, a 1P battery works out perfectly fine for my needs. Needless to say, the range will also be better, more cells, means more capacity, so at the minimum, 
I expect to get 33% more range from that fact alone. However, I do expect to get an additional range boost due to the improved efficiency and the reduced sag. But ultimately, time will tell. All right, we made it. The view right here. Is it cold? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go back down. Oh, going for the grass? Okay. Sheesh. I'm riding down on the grass. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me filming. I'm filming. Whoa, my nose is so far down. Well, I mean, I was leaning really hard down. Hard down. Paul, let's go down this. Let's go down this. Okay. Yeah. Woo! I'm skidding down. All right, I survived. Shoot. <laughs> Yo, I'm following you. Uh oh, no, 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 no! Well, so much more fun in the grass. All right, speed test, go. Speed test. Speed test. Come on, Papa. Speed test. Come on. You got this. You got this. Come on. Come on. You got this. You got this. Come on. Woo. Sheesh. Oh, oh, oh. You're catching up. You're catching up. The tent. <laughs> Overall, I'm really happy with how things turned out. The 16S upgrade was definitely the right move, and now I can really get the full potential out of my fun wheel. Maybe in a few weeks' time, I'll be able to actually hit the duty cycle tilt back limit, but for now, I think this setup gives me more than I can handle at the moment. Thank you for watching. See you next time.